One of the questions that often comes up for Bitnami or really even you know, anybody who's in the cloud space are, what are some of the differences between virtual machines and containers and when should I use you know, one versus the other? Uh, unfortunately, the answer is, is not so simple and not clear cut. We can't say you should always use containers or always use virtual machines, but there are some things to keep in mind. Um, there are certain kinds of applications which benefit from running in containers or using microservices in general. And microservices basically means taking an application and decomposing it into smaller parts. This is really good if you need to build, let's say, a web scale application, and you need to have the ability to turn up different dials of performance somewhat independent of each other. For example, maybe the middleware piece or the front end or the, the database piece, you need to scale them individually. The other benefit of containers is a consistency between the development environment and the production environment, where you can take things easily from one to the other without major alterations. Um, that being said, there are some things about containers that are very different. They're not just smaller, leaner virtual machines. Some of the two biggest differences have to do with persistent storage. So in a, in a container, the container needs to have the storage living outside of itself somewhere else. So if you build an application in containers, you need to have the database, the persistent part of the application, living elsewhere. The other part, and this gets into container lifecycle management, is that you don't patch containers. Because there is no internal storage, there's no benefit to deploying a patch to the container, you know, bringing it down for a while and bringing it up. Actually, with containers, when you have a new version of the container or you need to update it in some way, you actually replace it. Um, and there are some ways to do this involving, for example, orchestration tools like Kubernetes that can do rolling updates. But the most important concept you need to understand is that when a container gets updated, you actually just kill the old container and you bring a new one. And because all the data is stored over here, that's okay. You just reattach it to the data and then that's what you get moving forward. When it comes to thinking about it from a bigger picture, you, know, you should ask yourself, you know, why do I want to use containers and what will I benefit from it? In some cases, for example, maybe it's a uh, CRM application or a marketing automation application that's used by a department. It may just be easier to leave it inside of a virtual machine because it doesn't need to scale, it doesn't have a high rate of change, and more importantly, it will work on your existing infrastructure. Containers are really going to be a benefit where you have a, an application that's really important to perform at its best and a high level of scale or that you're going to be updating a lot because it's important to the business.